ladies, gentlemen, friends. Welcome back to another edition of the Most Dramatic Bachelor Recap Week 2. As always, we will have our recap and then stick around until the end for my power rankings. Now, we start off week two back at the La Quinta Resort as we will be at all season. I forgot to mention this last week. Is this the best situation the contestants of The Bachelor and Bachelorette have ever had? Yes, they're normally at the mansion, which is beautiful, iconic, but they're all living on top of each other. Because of Corona, because of the quarantine, everything, they all have their own living quarters. They're at a resort to themselves. This has to be the best setup ever, right? I, I can't believe I forgot to bring that up last week. Anyways, we start off week two with the man himself, Chris Harrison. He enters and he has our very first group date card of the season. So exciting. It's like opening day for baseball. So we have our group date card and Yosef is on the group date card and he gets some camera action right away. And I realized I hate him even more than I did last week. So there's that. Uh, the date card is all about love languages. Yay. Um, so we have a full on like Romeo and Juliet set. I had a very close friend of mine send me a screenshot off of Instagram saying it was so cheesy and that she loved it. I agree, I love it too. This is what we watch it for. This is what we watch it for. So it's, you know, oh Claire, oh Claire, why art thou in love with you after one night? You know, all of that action is what's going on here. And then we got Dale borderline, you know, on the verge of tears here, saying how much he trusts Claire. Like, did, did these guys, as kids, were they never taught and properly educated on stranger danger? This is a stranger. They've known Claire for 24 hours, and it's I love you, and I'm on the verge of tears talking about how passionate I am to be here, and I trust you so much. Where is, where are the parents? Obviously, this poor parenting, all of these guys, my gosh. Um, we're back from commercial. Everyone is running for a gift for Claire expressing their love language. This is still going on. Now we have the physical touch, and of course, Dale steals the show. Um, now it's time for the after party, and it starts, starts out very awkward. When Claire sits down, she looks amazing. Um, Claire's like, okay, who wants to steal me for some quality time? And it was like, guys, not all at once. Every, it was, there was an awkward silence. No one was like eagerly jumping like, yes, Claire. Like you would think, in this situation, this is what you're there for, right? Like there should be like, every single guy should, you know, not be bashful, just straight on go for it. Like, oh, I'll grab you, Claire, I'll grab you, Claire. Um, finally, Bennett did after some awkward silence and they were talking and it was going well, but Claire was like, I'm sorry, like, I, I'm just not, like, I'm here with you right now, but there, there's this thing in the back of my head I have to address. Because basically, she, all the guys just wanted to sit around and bro out and she was pissed. So she goes back, addresses the group, and she is pissed. She is upset, and Yosef is like, you know, I'll just go ahead and speak for the group. And she's like, sit down, you don't speak for the group. And then other guys are just like, you don't speak for me, I speak for myself, I'm a man. There was this one guy like, hey, you know, if, I didn't know what was, I didn't realize what was going on, you know, can I still steal you from some quality time? First off, shut up. Second, sit down. Three, who the hell are you? I haven't seen you. Who the hell are you? Sit down, shut up. Shut up, man, I don't wanna hear from you. And then, the testosterone starts to fly. All the guys are standing up. It's starting to quickly become a bunch of frat guys when they're voting on um, after Rush to see who uh, is gonna be in their pledge class. Like there are guys like standing up, like talking about, oh, I speak for myself, this is great, this is great, blah, blah, blah. And so, um, like I said, everyone's standing up. I, uh, you don't speak for me, I speak for myself. Dale delivers some more lines that I assume are from a Matthew McConaughey rom-com. Um, yeah, that's just all going on. And then, so Dale, uh, you know, steals uh, Claire for some one-on-one -on -one time. The fireworks continue to spark. The sparks continue to fly. The chemistry continues to build. Now we have a knock at the door. It's Chris Harrison. Or no, it's not Chris Harrison. It's just a delivery boy. We have one-on-one -on -one date card. It goes to Jason. Our very first one-on-one -on -one date card of the year. Now, back to the group date first. The guys, they picked it up, they finished out the night strong, and the first, or not the first impression rose, but the group date rose goes to Riley. Riley had some really great time with Claire. This is well-deserved. A little bit of slow dancing, boys to men, men action, very intimate, things are going on there, sparks were flying. Riley, very deserving of this group date rose. Now, we have a Yosef talking head. Um, he got put in his place by Claire. He got put in his place by the other guys and he didn't get the rose and now he's bitching and complaining and playing the victim card and basically blaming 
everyone else for the fact that he's a loser. Now it's one-on-one -on -one time. Jason and Claire, they wrote letters to their younger selves. They, 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 they were screaming. There was, uh, you know, they were sharing about things from their past that they're, you know, sort of their demons that, that, that they want to break away from, that they want to put away in their past that they've been working on but just haven't fully gotten there yet. So they're going all over everything. So it got pretty deep. This was a great, powerful one-on-one -on -one date. I really, really enjoyed watching this. Some chemistry was obviously built. And of course, Jason takes home the rose. Well done, Jason. Now, we have another group date. It is dodgeball time. I'm excited to find out who's going to be the white goodman of this group. And then after seeing Kenny, the boy band manager, there is no way that he wasn't Steve the Pirate in a previous life. So we have all the characters for dodgeball here. Now Chris Harrison shows up. He says, we're going to have a game. The red team and the blue team. And whoever wins gets the after party with Claire. The other team has to go home. So a lot at stake here. This is the biggest dodgeball game any of these guys have ever played in. Trust me. Now, the guys show up and Claire's there. She goes, I'm going to make this a little bit more interesting. We're going to have a few rule changes here. We're going to play strip dodgeball. So the team that loses, loses a, loses a piece of clothing. So making it a little interesting here. Not interesting for me. Naturally, I was very ill watching this. I thought I came down with the coronavirus. And uh, then we had a ref who was obviously an actor and was uh, just really, really over the top, really going for it, kind of like Wahlberg in The Departed. You know, probably the kind of guy that hands out his headshot every opportunity he gets when he serves someone at Starbucks, that kind of deal. Um, the red team wins and the blue balls lose and they have to take the walk of shame home. Red team after party celebrate. Yes, blue balls. They're going home with blue balls. They're upset. Now, we're at the after party. The red team, uh, easy is the first to grab Claire. They have some good time. But the one guy that really stood out here was Chasen. Yes, his name is Chasen. He had a really good moment with Claire. They had a really good connection. And now Blake from the Blue Balls, after taking the walk of shame, is taking an even more shameful walk back. He's being a sore loser here. I hated this. This was, he's coming to crash the party. This is not how you act when I, myself, put you in my power rankings week one. This is not how you carry yourself when I put you in my power rankings. Blake, you let me down here big time. And then, Blake, he's like, I really wanted to show you some balls. And, dude, you're not. You're being immature. This is pathetic. And now the red team storms in, like it's West Side Story. And as they should, it is not fair for Blake to be there. And then, Claire wraps it up with Blake before she sends him back. And this man has the audacity to go in for a kiss? Are you kidding me, dude? What? Where is your, where is your self-awareness? There is, self-awareness does not exist with this guy, at least in this moment. This was bad. This was really, really bad. I don't care. I'm making a promise right now to Bachelor Nation, Bachelorette Nation out there. I, I don't care how much Claire loves, likes Blake, whatever. I don't care how much he shines. He will not, never be in my power rankings again. I can't get over this. This really really bothered me. I just, I hate crap like this. I hate it. I can't stand for it. It happens every season. I can't stand it. Blake, no longer going to be my power rankings. It doesn't matter, no matter what. No. The night keeps getting worse because the guy, who I haven't, a guy who I haven't, haven't seen before, is one-on-one -on -one with Claire, and all he keeps saying is how gorgeous Claire is. Now, that's flattering. That's great. Claire is gorgeous. She deserves to be told that she's gorgeous, but when she asks him, you know, you know, because he was like, you know, you're gorgeous, and when I saw you were going to be the Bachelorette, I just had to be here. And when she wants him to go deeper on that, you know, what made you want to be here? He just keeps going back to the, the default that she's gorgeous, and you're like, I don't know you on a personal level. But obviously, like, you would know a little bit about Claire. Like, do a little research. Like, she's been on the show before. You know some things about her. You know, guys say, you stood up for, her, um, you know, stood up for yourself. We've seen the Juan Pablo clip a million times. Like, dude... You know, I don't care if you don't follow the show. Like, someone's going to show that to you. Like, it's going to come up. So don't give me, like, you don't know anything about her. And you can just tell when she called him out, his head was just spinning. There was just a monkey in there crashing symbols together. Um, and then he just kind of defaulted. He's like, what have I heard other guys say on this show? I'm just going to say that. So it goes back to, you know, um, I'm just here to find love. I'm here to find my person, to find that connection, to family, start a family Love, family, family, and love, love and family, blah, 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 blah. Diary of the mouth, I couldn't stand it. And Claire cuts cords with Brandon, 
Get out, Brandon. Brandon's gone. And this is what I love about Claire. She doesn't mess around. She's not playing around. Brandon is gone. Um, now it's time for the group date rose time. Jason makes that impression, gets the rose. Riley, Jason, Jason now all have roses. Now we're back from commercial. Yosef is back at it and terrible as ever going on about how, you know, the, 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 the strip dodgeball was was classless and he go again, I have a daughter and I don't want her to see that, you know, and she, you know, I liked Claire a lot better before she humiliated, humiliated me in front of everyone. Don't you think, Yosef, that you humiliate yourself each and every day by existing? Yeah. So that happens. Now Claire grabs Blake and I'm like, okay, she's gonna have a talk here. She's gonna tell him to chill out, dude. But I hate this. She is rewarding his behavior. She expresses about how much, how beautiful and amazing that it was that he did that. I love you, Claire, but I, you know, I, I can't switch here. I'm sticking to my principles here. Yes, I know I watched The Bachelorette, but I still have principles. I had morals last week, and now I have principles. I'm building, I'm building towards being a better human here. And she gives him a rose. She goes, I don't want you to worry. She gives him a rose. This killed me a little bit inside. This was sort of a dagger for me. Um, so now Riley, Jason, Jason, and Blake have roses. They're the only ones who are safe. We didn't get a rose ceremony tonight. They're the only ones who are safe. Except for Dale, of course. He's, he doesn't have a rose yet, but he obviously is safe. So now let's get to my power rankings like they were last week and will be all season presented by the coldest water. When you're watching The Bachelorette, it gets to rose ceremony time when things get awkward, when things get cringy. You need to cool down, you're a little bit drunk, you're drinking the red sauce over here. Cool down, hydrate, sober up with some ice cold water out of your coldest water bottle. They're presenting our power ranking. So week one, remember we just had three. It was Dale, Blake, and Easy. This week, I have Dale still at number one. Jason, after that big time performance, big time connection on that one-on-one -on -one date is now at number two. Number three, we have Easy, and coming in at number four, rounding up our top four power rankings for week two, Jason, who we saw make a connection with Claire and grab that second group date rose. So good for Jason, Dale, Ch Jason, Easy, and Jason are our power rankings this week. We got some good previews and we're gonna have a rose ceremony to start next week. So next week's gonna be really fun. I will talk to you guys next Monday.